Here we're going to solve code forces round 878, division 3, problem D, Wooden Toy Festival. In this problem, we have a festival in which we have three carvers. Each of these carvers can take a toy with some integer specification. And for some integer specification X for the carver, they have a bunch of different customers. If a customer comes up to a carver with specification Y, then to make that toy, it, this carver takes absolute value of X minus Y time. Now, among these three different carvers, we can pick any three different times. And we know customers can come at any time, but we want to minimize the waiting time for our customers. And in order to do so, we must distribute the customers among our three carvers optimally. Now, we also know that carvers can work simultaneously and so satisfy different orders at the same time. So let's see what the input looks like for this. The input looks like a number of test cases and a number of people that will come to the workshop for each test case and the specifications for each of these people. And in, the, in this problem, we must output t, t values, each of which correspond to the answer to each test case, the best waiting time that the carvers can get. Now let's work on solving this problem. Say we have a time t. How can we make sure we can cover each and every one of our customers? Let's say that our employee starts at working capacity x. And say that uh, one specification is at point y. When is y coverable by this employee? It's only coverable when if y is less than x, when x minus y is less than or equal to t, or if y is greater than x, when y minus x is less than or equal to t. Let the smaller, smaller bound for y be y1 and the larger bound for y be y2. This is equivalent to saying y2 minus y1 less than or equal to 2t. So our, this problem is essentially equivalent to determining whether or not we can divide up our people who come to request toys into three ranges of length 2t. Now let's come up with some heuristics on where t can be. We know t must be between 0 and 10 to the 9th inclusive because each specification is between 0 and 10 to the 9th. Also, 10 to the 9th is very large and hard to run a linear search on, so this range is slightly too large to run a linear pass on, so we might need something faster. We also know the following. If some time t1 works, then for all t greater than or equal to t1, the time t can clear every single specification. Thus, since we know that our t lies in a very large range, so we must search for it quickly, and we know that for every t1 that works, every time greater works, the obvious algorithm here is a binary search. So let's start coding the problem up now. So let's start with our inputs. So we'll start with an int t, which is the number of test cases. Um, we'll input into this t later. Um, and we'll iterate through this t. And for each test case, we have an integer n, which is the number of customers, and a vector of each of these customers' preferences. And we'll input into these. And we'll clear our vector at the start of each iteration of our test case. And here we're just going to read into each of our values in our nums array, which is each of the preferences and specifications of each customer. Now, in order to be able to binary search and cl check cl quickly, we should sort our list of nums. Now let's write a check function. So in this check function, we want to check whether or not we can find three ranges of time of length 2t that cover all of our people. So we'll keep a length of our uh, keep a track of our current index, which represents the left side of our current range, and we'll keep track of a uh, current number of workers used, um, which is one at the start, since we've used one at least one range, and that's the number of ranges we're going to cover total. And now we'll just iterate through. So if our current value minus our left's value, which is nums cur idx, is greater than two times time, we need to use another worker starting at our current value. Thus cur idx becomes i, and we add one to our cur workers. And now it's only true if we use at most three workers, so we'll return cur workers less than or equal to three. Now let's write our binary search. So we'll take a left index cur left and a right index cur right. And cur right is at most 
the rightmost index of a person, which is the last value in our sorted nums array. Now we're going to write our actual recursive binary search. So the end condition is when curl left is curl right, then we just output our curl left, or if curl left is curl right minus one, in which case if curl left is checked and it works, we output the leftmost value, which is the smallest value which works. Otherwise, we output the rightmost value, or the writer value, which is curl right. Now we're going to do standard binary search techniques. We're going to take a middle value, which is the average of the left and right values. And if it's checked, we'll check the smaller range. Otherwise, we'll check the right, or right range. If, it, if it's checked, we'll move our right to the middle. Otherwise, we'll move our left to the middle. After debugging a couple of syntax errors, we can see that it clearly works on the input. So now we're going to put it into CodeForces software. And as you can see, once we put it into CodeForces software, we can see that it works.